This is going to be a study on the subject of abortion. And the first thing we're going to look at is unborn babies are formed by God and known of God. And if the Lord formed the baby, then he meant for it to be in existence. So you're killing something that the Lord formed. In Jeremiah 1, five it says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So if you have an abortion, you're taking something that was formed by God and ripping it apart. The Lord knows the plans, the future, the name that the child would have had had it not been aborted. Are you going to take something that the Lord formed and rip it apart? The next thing, you're going to kill the Lord's reward. In Psalms 127.3, Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. In the Bible, a child is a reward and a blessing. When women are barren in the Bible, it was sometimes because of a judgment on them. David and Michael, for example, the Lord shut up her womb. Being with child was considered a very good thing in the Bible. Women desired it. Women desired to be with child. It's just a, it's unnatural for a woman to want to abort the child. Are you going to kill the Lord's reward? If the Lord calls the fruit of the womb a reward, then why are you going to just rip it apart? That doesn't make much sense. Number three, they are alive in the womb. The baby can hear, and it can even have joy. The baby can hear voices, it can hear music. In Luke one forty four, it says, For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. That's John the Baptist. He leaped in his mother's womb for joy. So it could hear, and it had joy. Isn't that incredible? So you're going to kill something that hears and has joy. So if it hears and it has joy, wouldn't it be alive? I mean, they even get the hiccups. Okay, number four. Unborn babies are called children in the Bible. In the book of Genesis, chapter 25, verse 22 and 24 through 24, it says, And the children struggled together within her. And she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated. <coughs> oh. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. So it calls these twins in her womb. In verse 22, it says, And the children struggle together within her. They're actual people. The Bible calls them children. So are you going to take these children and just rip them apart? Number five. Job, in the book of Job, he speaks of dying and giving up the ghost from the womb. In Job 3.11, it says, Why died I not from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? If Job could die in the womb, he would have had to have a soul. So how could he have died if, if he wasn't alive? Number six, some people believe abortion is a sin, but they don't believe it's murder. But in, in Genesis 2-7, it says, And Lord God formed men out of the dust of the ground, 
and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So they teach you aren't a living soul until you breathe your first, first breath. But you see, this is a different thing going on here because Adam was a direct creation by God. He wasn't in a woman's belly. You were. And even if unborn babies don't have a soul, the doctors still kill the body. Now, I believe they have a soul. I'm just saying, if they don't have a soul until they take the first breath, they still got a live body. The doctors kill the body. In Matthew 10, 28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, is able to destroy your soul and your body in hell. But man can only kill the body. The abortion doctor, he's not killing the soul anyway. He's just killing the body. Number eight, unborn babies are alive because they have their own blood. In Leviticus 17, 11, it says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. Unborn babies have blood. Life of the flesh is in the blood. Number nine, abortion is wrong because the Lord hates it. The Lord hates abortion. In Proverbs 6, 16 through 17, These six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. And if unborn babies have blood and you shed it, it's innocent blood. It's never done nothing to nobody. It's not hurting anybody. It's innocent blood. If you shed it, the Lord ha hates it. The Lord hates the shedding of innocent blood. There was an abortion doctor, a guy named Henry Morgan Taylor, or Morgan Taller, performed 10,000 safe abortions in his life. They say there were around 3,000 serial killers and just 10,000 victims. So one man killed, one abortion doctor killed more than 3,000 serial killers. He killed 10,000 babies. That's a lot of abortions. And if there was... And I mean, I'm, I've read these facts off the internet. 3,000 serial killers, 10,000 victims. So one man killed more than 3,000 serial killers. That's pretty crazy and creepy. How does this man go to bed at night knowing he took the life of 10,000 innocent babies? Psalms 11.5 says, The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence his soul hateth. Abortion is a sick, disgusting, violent act and sin. Number 10. Notice murdering children. Notice what's in the same list as in the Bible. It's associated with things of darkness. In Deuteronomy 18, 10 through 11, it says, There shall not be found anyone that maketh his son or daughter to pass through the fire. There's your child sacrifice. There's your child killing. And look what else it says. Or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. And the Lord calls these things an abomination to him. So, child sacrifice which is what abortion is you're sacrificing your child because you love yourself the god of self is pleased with the abortion uh, that sin is associated with divination witchcraft talking to the dead all these demonic satanic sins and the Lord calls these an abomination. It's pretty creepy sin. It's very scary. Number 11. Now, I believe in capital punishment for abortion. I believe abortion is murder. 
Many believe abortion is murder, but don't believe the doctor should be put to death. The doctor is a killer. Now, I admit there are some doctors that probably don't know what they're doing is wrong somehow. They don't see it as a murder. They don't know that they're wrong. But I believe that there are doctors that do know what they're doing is wrong. They do know that they're killing an innocent person. And in Jesus' own words in Luke 17, 2, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. In Exodus 21, 22 through 25, it says, If men strive and hurt a woman with child so that her fruit depart from her and yet no mischief follow, he shall surely be punished according as the woman's husband will lay upon him, and he shall pay as the judges determine. And if any mischief follow, then thou shalt give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. So if men strive and hurt a woman with child so that her fruit depart from her and the mischief follow, then thou shalt give life for life. There should be capital, capital punishment for abortion because it's murder. You're taking an innocent life. And what I don't understand is people are okay with killing an innocent baby but they're against capital punishment for a killer. Someone who's took someone else's life. They want him to stay alive. They think it's wrong to kill someone who's took someone else's life, but it's okay to kill an innocent baby. That's never even spoke a bad word to anybody yet. Next. Abortion and satanic sacrifices. You see, abortion is not just a fleshy sin, like a child talking back to his parents. It's not just a fleshy sin, like a man looking at a woman that's immodestly dressed. It crosses over into the spiritual side of, of sin. In Psalms 106, 37-38, it says, Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan. And the land was polluted with blood. So the land is polluted with blood when this child sacrifice is going on. So what do you think about America? In Leviticus 18.21, And thou shalt not let any of this, thy seed pass through the fire to Moloch. Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. 2 Chronicles 28.3, Moreover that he burned incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom and burnt his children in the fire after the abominations of the heathen. Notice it, after the abominations of the heathen. Everybody thinks oh, people in America, they're classy, they got sense, they got some sense. America is heathens, made to look flashy and pretty and rich. Other countries think we're just, we just look rich. We're just a bunch of heathen. I mean, I'm, I, I say we, but I'm not, I don't, I'm not performing these abortions. People in America or heathen, whom the Lord hath cast out before the children of Israel. Moreover, he burnt incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom, and burnt his children in the fire after the abominations of the heathen. Wow, these abortion doctors that are rich, got nice cars, nice clothes, nice house, such a great education. Do nothing but a bunch of heathen. They profane the name of God. They, they blaspheme his name. They pollute the land with their own blood with the, or with the blood of these innocent children. <clears throat> so abortion actually pollutes a location. It's associated with 
satanic sacrifice. And there's a lot of Satanism involved with the with abortion. In Leviticus 20 and verse 2, it says, Again, thou shalt say to the children of Israel, Whosoever he be of the children of Israel, or of the strangers that shall join in Israel, that giveth any of his seed unto Moloch, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. So you see, once again, child sacrifice associated with worshiping a false god, Moloch. And once again, death penalty. It says, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. So killing a child, is, you, could get, you should get the death penalty for that. Now, Jeremiah 7, 31 through 32, it says, And they have built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my heart. The Lord's not for this stuff. He don't, he's not telling anybody that they should abort their child or kill their child. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be called Tophet, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. For they shall bury and tough it till there be no place. The land is polluted. And you think, well, we're more civilized. We don't have these false gods we're worshiping. Well, today the false gods are money and self. In 1 Timothy 6.10, it says, For the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. When you commit an abortion, you know, there's a lot of money in that. The doctors are getting a lot of money from doing this evil act. And then the woman, I mean, I don't know the reason of every woman. And I know that, the, that a lot of women don't know any better. But a lot of these women, all they're concerned about is their self and their own life. They got the God of self that they're sacrificing this child to. They don't want this child to take away her fun. And that's just, that's wicked. You're being a lover of your own self. And I mean, if you were listening to this and you've had abortion before, God for, will forgive you for it. You can be forgiven. And... The blood of Jesus will be like it never even happened. But I mean, we're trying to expose this sin of abortion. So we're talking badly against it because it's a bad thing. The Lord's attitude towards those who choose life. You need to see it in the Bible. The Lord's attitude towards those who choose life. God bless the Hebrew midwives for saving the children. In Exodus 1, 16 through 20, it says, And he said, When you do the office of a midwife, midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then you shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. They didn't kill them. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have you done this thing and have saved the men children alive? And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered ere the midwives come in unto them. Therefore God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. So God deals well with the people who don't kill children. But the people who kill children, he wants them dead too. You know what happened to Pharaoh, the man that's telling them to kill the male children? You know what happens to Pharaoh? He ends up being drowned himself. And in Matthew, the book of Matthew, uh, Herod has all the children uh, in Bethlehem killed. And it's a sign of the times. It's when you, when God shows you that someone is killing babies, killing small children, it's a sign something big is about to happen. Back then in the book of Exodus, you was about to see the children of Israel 
get out from under the bondage of Egypt and go through the Red Sea. And then when Pharaoh was killing babies, something big was about to happen. Jesus Christ showed up. So now they're killing babies at an all-time high again. Something big's about to happen. Next, abortion, baby killing, it's an attack on the family. Such as homosexuality, feminism, deadbeat fathers. These things are an attack on the family. The devil doesn't want a family with a mother, a father, and children. With the father working, the mother taking care of the children, the father being a good uh, Christian spiritual leader. So he, what he does is he makes the dad be a lazy deadbeat that doesn't care about anybody but himself, that won't get up out of bed, probably drinks and plays video games all day, a horrible example. Then he makes the woman a loudmouth, obnoxious know-it-all that wants to run the home. And then he makes the children go crazy and drive the parents crazy. And... You know, he brings in homosexuality, so then you don't have a mother and a father. You got a father and a father, or a mother and a mother, or the feminism stuff that makes the woman believe she, she, she should run the thing. And then you have abortion, where the parents kill the baby. It's an attack on the family, just like all these other things. Hosea 12, 3 says, He took his brother by the heel in the womb, and by his strength, he had power with God. You see that in Hosea 12, 3, the child, when it was coming out of the womb, recognized its twin brother as a brother. It calls him a brother. He took his brother by the heel in the womb. So you're a family man. A twins in the womb, according to the Bible, are family members already. I mean, but, but they're, are they not alive? If he took his brother by the heel in the womb and you killed it, aren't you killing two brothers? Now, here's a story illustrating natural and unnatural affection. Abortion is what you call unnatural affection. In 1 Kings 3, 16 through 28, <clears throat> you're going to see a woman who has natural affection and you're going to see a woman with unnatural affection. Now, there's two women. They're coming to King Solomon. It says, There came there two women that were harlots unto the king, and stood before him. And the one woman said, O oh, my Lord, I and this woman dwell in one house, and I was delivered of a child with her in the house. And it came to pass the third day after that I was delivered, that this woman also delivered also. And we were together. There was no stranger with us in the house, save we two in the house. And this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it and she rose at midnight and took my son from beside me while thine handmaid slept and laid it in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I rose in the morning to give my child suck, behold, it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son, which I did bear. And the other woman said, Nay, but the living is my son and the dead is thy son. And this said, No. But the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. Thus they spake before the king. Then said the king, The one saith, This is my son that liveth, and thy son is the dead. And the other saith, Nay, but thy son is the dead, and my son is the living. And the king said, Bring me a sword. And they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, Divide the living child in two, and give half to the one and half to the other. Then spake the woman, whose the living child was unto the king, for her bowels yearned upon her son. And she said, O oh my Lord, give her the living child, and no wise slay it. But the other said, Let it neither be mine nor thine, but divide it. Then the king answered and said, Give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. She is the mother thereof. And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged, but they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to do judgment. So you see, the woman who didn't want the child murdered is the one that the son belonged to, not the one that wanted it divided. The woman who, want, who uh, 
The one that divided had what you call unnatural affection. But the woman that was willing to give up her child to save it is the one that had natural affection. You see, the killing of a child is unnatural. It's unnatural for a woman to want to kill her baby. That just makes no sense. Now, in Genesis 30 and verse 1, you're going to see how women felt about children in the Bible. It says, And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children, else I die. They wanted children so bad that they would rather die than to not have one. Now, they're dying to get rid of a child if they're about to have one. Uh, that's That makes no sense. That, that they're, they're just so twisted and, and have such unnatural affection. They would rather die than to have the child than to want to die if they can't have one like they could in the Bible. Now, another thing is, do women have a right over their own body? Well, no, a Christian doesn't. In 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20, What know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own? People go around saying, signs, I'll have abortion. This is my body. This is my life. But the Bible says, Ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. Now that's a saved person. A saved person, someone that's believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, that's born again, your body is not your own. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. The baby has its own body, soul and spirit. And if it has its own blood, thoughts, and free will, you don't have a right to kill the baby it may be in your body but it's got its own body you don't have a right to just yeah these these women saying we have a right this is our body yeah but the baby has its own body soul and spirit it has its own blood it has its own thoughts it can be feeling joy when you're feeling depression you don't have a right to kill the baby. Uh, Hillary Clinton said, We're always going to argue about abortion. It's a hard choice and it's controversial. And that's why I'm pro-choice, because I want people to make their own choices. Now, how, how sweet does that sound? But she is an evil idiot. They already made their choice. She says, I want people to make their own choices. But they already make their choice when they had sex. And you can't choose for the baby. You can't choose for it. It's its own person. Um, uh, this Margaret Sander or whatever said, No woman can call herself free who does not control her own body. Romans 6.20 says, For when you were the servants of sin... You are free from righteousness. When you serve sin, you don't have to worry about righteousness. And that's what these women are doing. They serve sin. They're free from righteousness. But they're not free from the bondage that sin brings. And so this Margaret woman is a nut. Is abortion okay? In the sense of incest and rape, as some people say. In Genesis 19, you're going to read about a story of two very, very, very wicked women. And a very, it's a saint, lots of saint, but he's, he ain't right. And they still don't murder their children that came about by incest and borderline rape. In Genesis 19, 30 through 38, it says, And Lot went up out of Zoar and dwelt in the mountain, and his two daughters with him, for he feared to dwell in Zoar. And he dwelt in a cave, he and his two daughters. And the firstborn said unto the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man in the earth to come in unto us after the manner of all the earth. 
Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. <clears throat> and they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with her father, and he perceived not when she lay down nor when she arose. And it came to pass on the morrow that the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold, I lay yesternight with my father. Let us make him drink wine this night also, and go thou in and lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night also, and the younger arose and lay with him. And he perceived not when she lay down nor when she arose. Thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. Now notice... They wanted the children. These two very wicked daughters that got their own father drunk and had sex with him, they are very wicked, extremely. They didn't kill their kids, though. It says, And the firstborn bare a son and called his name Moab, the same as the father of the Moabites unto this day. And the younger, she also bare a son and called his name ben -Ami the same as the father of the children of Ammon unto this day. So there you have it. They was wicked, extremely, but they didn't want to kill their own kids. Notice these women were very immoral women that grew up in Sodom, yet they didn't kill their own kids. What does that say about the women today? So are you pro-life or are you pro-death? Proverbs 8.36 says, But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. If someone chooses life, they choose Jesus Christ. If someone chooses death, they choose the devil. Because Hebrews 2.14 says, For as, for as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might... Destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. The devil had the power of death. He loves death. Ronald Reagan said, I've noticed that everyone who is for abortion has already been born. That's a good statement. How would you feel like, how would you feel if your mama performed an abortion on you? Now, I know there are people that wish their parents did have an abortion, but that's because they're depressed. So they're admitting, by, by saying that, you know, you're admitting you, you're, you only want to wish your parents had an abortion because your life's not going that good. But that doesn't mean all these other babies' life isn't going to go good. And you're going to let them miss out on the opportunity to have a good life. Now, what's Planned Parenthood's reasons for abortions? They say, or some people say, they want to be the best parents possible to the kids that they already have. Wow. The parents committing these abortions want to be the best parents possible to kids that they already have. Wow, but you see, murder is not a good influence on the kids you already have, people. Think about that. Another reason is they're not ready to be a parent yet. You're not ready to be a parent yet. Too bad. You're going to have to be one. And you should have thought about that before you did what you do to have a child. And the Lord warns against fornication, you know. Another reason that people have an abortion, that Planned Parenthood gives for a good reason for abortion, is it's not a good time in their life to have a baby. Wow. But you see, sacrifices show you love your kid. You make sacrifices for a baby. I have kids. It's a constant Everyday sacrifice, Sac sacrificing what I want to do, sacrificing sleep, sacrificing all day long for your kid. And sacrifice shows you love your kid. It's selfish to say it's not a good time in 
my life to have a baby. When it's too late, the baby's already being formed by God in your womb. The Bible says that she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. Uh, is, is that all you're concerned about is living for pleasure? Wanting to enjoy your life and your hobbies and your career and your friends is not a good excuse to have an abortion. Another one is they want to finish school, focus on work, or achieve other goals before having a baby. Wow, that's just crazy. That's a reason they get for, an, for a good reason to have an abortion. Because they want to finish school, focus on work. Good grief. God's primary, primary plan for the woman was to be a keeper at home anyway. Not to finish school, focus on work, or achieve other goals. <clears throat> Another one they give is they're not in a relationship with someone they want to have a baby with. Well, they chose to fornicate. If it wasn't rape and things like that, they chose to have sex with a man. So they got to live with the consequences. Another one is they're in an abusive relationship or were sexually assaulted. Okay, so you should punish others because of the bad circumstances in your life. I mean, I'm completely sorry if someone's been raped or sexually assaulted in any way. But you can't punish the unborn baby because of a bad thing that happened in your life. What I do in, in, in a situation doesn't change the fact that it's wrong, you see? Say that if I was a woman and tomorrow I got sexually assaulted and was, became pregnant, if I just came out of the blue and said, well, I have to have an abortion, my... My view changing on the subject doesn't change the fact that it's still wrong. Just because I, I become in that situation would not change the fact that it's wrong because, you know, people are going to come and say, well, if you were in that situation, you wouldn't think that way. Maybe I wouldn't think the way I think now. But that still doesn't change the fact that it's wrong to kill the baby, even if you were raped. Now, another... Th thing they say is abortion is a way of regulating population size that's just sick as a way of regulating groups within a population as a way of improving the population and they say abortion for social social reasons like poverty mother unable to cope with child mother being too young to cope with child. Then they say abortion where the child of the pregnancy would have an unacceptable quality of life, such as cases where the child would have serious physical handicaps, serious genetic problems, serious mental defects. That's ridiculous. So you're going to kill the baby because he's going to be handicapped or have mental defects. God doesn't want you killing these types of people. Actually, God says comfort the feeble-minded. Someone, this someone with mental defects. This soul is no less of a soul than you are. If God says comfort the feeble-minded, I don't think he wants you to kill them. Then you got abortion for the sake of the mother's health, including her mental health. Wow. Get out of here. This world thinks backwards. They save animals, but not babies. Some guy named George Carlin said, how, how come when it's us, it's an abortion, and when it's a chicken, it's an omelet? This stupid fool has no respect for human life. Adam is said to have dominion over the animals. Human life is much more important than animal life. But that's what you have today is people who care more about animal life than they do human life. Uh, most states will charge a man with two, mo two murders for the killing of a pregnant woman. What does that tell you? If, if you're charged for two murders when you kill a pregnant woman because you killed the baby too, which I agree with that, you should be charged for two murders, then how is abortion not murder? 
These are just some things to really, people should really think about. But abortion is murder. I've showed you plenty of clear evidence in the scriptures that abortion is wrong.